Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, I think this is Rolex Talking Point 6, pages 14 and 15. You can see a Rolex Oyster case with a movement inside and the case back off. It's a beautiful thing. Now the heading here is the Rolex quality, and then on the next page, what is a chronometer? All right, let's start with the Rolex quality. Rolex pursues a policy of total commitment towards quality. The movements are devised, designed, and created by Rolex technicians, and the varied pieces that constitute a, a movement are, with a few exceptions, entirely machined by Rolex. Every one of these components, component pieces, there are more than 200 in an oyster, is subject to quality control several times during its manufacture. Each part has its own importance, for each contributes not only to the good looks of this high-quality movement, but also to its efficient working. All right, so more than 200 pieces in a typical oyster. And it's interesting, they say that for the most part, everything is entirely machined by Rolex, with few exceptions. It makes me curious what those exceptions are. Um, I've heard the crystals are outsourced by Rolex, I couldn't say. Um, at one point that might have been true and these days um, it might not be true. They, they, you know, Rolex has a tendency, I think, to when they do outsource, um, not do it for long. I point to the Valju movement. They used it for a while, but I think only until they could develop their own movement. So. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if everything uh, in the 30 years since this has been printed, if pretty much everything is, is Rolex. Perpetual. All right, so you've got the Rolex quality that I just read you, and then there's a little heading right here, Perpetual. If the name Oyster is an apt name for the case, the Perpetual is equally suited to the winding mechanism with its rotor invented by Rolex. It consists of a weight which pivots freely on a central axis, axis and which is sensitive to the slightest movement of the wrist. The self-winding perpetual rotor not only does away with daily manual winding, it also maintains the ma mainspring at equal and constant tension, thus guaranteeing regular long-term working. Many oyster perpetual movements are now high frequency. For example, the oscillations of the balance wheel are 28,800 per hour instead of 18,000 for a watch of normal construction. This characteristic ensures above average precision without rapidly wearing out the components. The final point to be emphasized is the precision with which each watch can be adjusted. You know, I made another video sort of um, you know, appreciating the perpetual um, rotor movement as well as the screw down crown that uh, allowed for uh, oysters to be waterproof. And it's interesting to see here that, uh, that yeah, um, this must have been a time when there were a couple of different uh, oscillation frequency is 28,800 per hour. Now, I think most of my watches have that, but again, if, you know, some of the older watches, 18,000. And this um, rotor, yeah, maintains a constant tension, which I think is to thank for the consistency you know when a manual wind starts to wind down the the tension is going to change and so that's going to have an effect on the accuracy of the watch one thing i've always been really impressed with is you know you can't ever hear or feel the rotor on a rolex now granted i don't shake my watches um i'm pretty careful with them but I've listened and there's not a lot of, um, well, there's no sort of sound. I mean, it's very smooth and there's sort of no feeling. Now, this 
watch that I'm wearing my grandfather's wedge field, you can you can hear the 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 sort of winding as you move the wrist. It's actually a kind of a satisfying sound. And four fifteen. And um, something like a you know a, a Orient Blue Mako, you can you can really get a sense that something is spinning in there. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more cavalier with that watch, so I can sort of give it a jerk and I can I can hear it, you know, I can hear it and feel it spin around. Um, you know, perhaps I could do that with one of my Rolex, as I just wouldn't though. Um, but that's very, very, uh, very interesting. Um, you know, how smooth those, uh, those uh, counterweights uh, are. All right, so on the next page, page 15, what is a chronometer? The term, cr the term chronometer and chronograph are often confused. A chronograph is a complex watch equipped with various independent counters and a tachometer. It serves to time production speeds or sporting speed tests and is normally equipped with press buttons. A Swiss chronometer, in contrast, is a watch which has successfully passed the severe tests of the Swiss official chronometer testing stations. The title of chronometer is therefore an official title which a manufacturer cannot himself give to his watches. There are several ways of going about applying for this distinction. One can select at random a number of movements and simply hope they will pass the tests. Or a number of movements can be prepared with special care, or one can do as Rolex does, manufacture each and every movement as if it were to undergo the official test and pass. All right, that's interesting. Let's stop there for a second. So chronometer, uh, you can't just call anything a chronometer. It's interesting. So I wonder if something like a, like a, um, you know, choose any brand, um, choose one of those uh, brands that I love to hate on, um, Steinhardt. I guess they couldn't just call it a chrono chronometer, um, which is interesting. I was going to check to see if my watch had a chronometer on it, but uh, again, we're in the wedge field. Um, so, I guess, yeah, to pass this test, they can select a, a few random watches, random watches, and then send them to be tested. Okay. And hope they'll pass the test. Or a number of movements can be prepared with special care. Okay, it's it's... I'm a little unclear. Okay, let me read this again. Maybe we can sort of work out the meaning together. There are several ways of going about applying for this distinction. One can select at random a number of movements and simply hope they will pass the tests. Okay, so if you were to select out of 110, I guess, and then hope they pass the tests, and then the ones that did would be called a chronometer. Or I'm unclear if if most of them passed, could you then apply chronometer to everything you produce? My guess it wouldn't be that. Uh, or a number of movements can be prepared with special care. Or one can do as Rolex does, manufacture each and every movement as if it were to undergo the official test and pass. All right, I'm sort of unclear on, you know, how many have to pass if it's, you know, over 50%. Um, or, yeah, it appears that that it's not like uh, each and every watch has to go undergo the test, but um, that a watch is produced through a process, it's tested, and then every watch that goes through that same stringent process can um, bear the name of chronometer as if it... Um, you know, has passed the test, which that example um, did. Um, to obtain the official title of chronometer, a mechanical watch has to undergo controlled tests for 15 days and nights in five positions and at different temperatures. It's interesting. I didn't know they did it with temperatures. Wow. I mean, I understood they did uh, the positions, but different temperatures, that is fascinating. For a quartz watch, though, uh, for a quartz watch, though the tests 
last only 12 days, they are even more severe and they include repeated shocks and extremes to humidity. That's sort of a moot point because the oyster, uh, oyster quartz is not produced anymore, but I guess back when they did um, produce the oyster quartz, um, repeated shocks were part of the testing process and extreme humidity, very interesting. But whether the watch movement is mechanical or quartz makes no difference to a Rolex oyster. The crucial element is that proven solidity and waterproof qualities of the case, which gives both mechanical and quartz movements unparalleled prote uh, protection. Let me read that last sentence again, I kind of butchered it. The crucial element is the proven solidity and waterproof qualities of the case, which gives both mechanical and quartz movements unparalleled protection. All right, so, um, yeah, I, and correct, correct me if you guys know the answer to this, but I'm under the impression that not every single watch is tested, but sort of some examples from a process are tested, and then any watch that goes through that uh, production process can hold the chronometer um, title. And of course, every watch does go through the five position and dim different temperature test. Anyway, kind of interesting stuff. Um, what, can I, what can you glean from that? Well, a chronometer and a chronograph are different. You guys know that. And a chronometer, um, you know, I guess that's uh, the COSC standard that we all we all know. Anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.